Hello friends, welcome to Insights I Can Initiative. In this video, we are going to discuss about Article 370 and the controversy around Article 370. You know the students, Supreme Court accepted the petition on Article 370 abolition. So we are going to discuss a detailed analysis on this particular issue. So before we going to discuss the detailed analysis, obviously first we will do the syllabus mapping, then we will check about the video content, video overview. After that, I will explain the concept. So before all this thing, one student yesterday in the, in the comment section have seen, sir, how to identify an issue from the news for preparation of current affairs for UPSC. Arnab Chakrabati. He was asking that how to identify issues in newspaper. Okay, don't worry. Uh, as because this video length is going to be little bit longer, I will make a short video like three or four minutes of video about how to prepare current affairs from newspaper. In that, I will explain how to identify the incidents as well as how to identify the issues. I will explain over there. So please keep that in mind. Now, the syllabus mapping. This issue is going to be help to you in your UPSC general studies paper 2 apart from this okay apart from mains in prelims perspective also this video is going to be very important because here we are going to discuss about various articles article 370 we will discuss and we are going to discuss about the article 367 okay and certain other issues we will discuss so prelims and mains point of view it helps in Indian polity related and of course here I will explain some concepts related to IR also international relations that is between India and Pakistan this is the syllabus mapping then what you can expect in this video why this particular issue is in news why we are discussing now why you are watching about this topic now the context i will explain later that some details about this particular issue and we'll discuss about how the article 370 came into existence we will discuss then what is the significance of article 370 and many times students will get confused what is the difference between article 370 and article 35a i will explain about article 35a and finally, in the ending of the video, we will discuss about what are the advantages of abolition of Article 370 and what are the criticisms against the abolition of Article 370. We will discuss that. This is the flow of information in this video. Now, let me explain the concepts. First, I will give an overview about this entire concepts. After that, we will go through the notes as usually. So, this is about Article 370. This is about Article 370 and Supreme Court. It challenged in the Supreme Court students. Now, first in this video, we are going to discuss about Article 370. First, as an aspirant, you have to know how it came into existence. How it came into existence. Basically, first you have to know Article 370. Next, what is the significance of Article 370? What is the significance? Okay, you introduced, you brought Article 370, but why the significance? What is the significance? Next why it abolished why it abolished the reason behind the abolishment of the article 370 okay that we will discuss and next we, have, we, discuss, we will discuss about procedure what procedure they followed whether it is challengeable in the constitution or not procedure we will discuss and finally the whole thing regarding this the impact of the abolition the impact of abolition impact of abolition of article 370 these are the various dimensions we will touch upon first let me explain about how article 370 came into existence okay the next slide i will explain how it came into existence so how article 370 came into existence you know students i'll give some historical timelines you know on 15th august 1947 india got independence and when india got independence according to that mount button partition plan at that time, India was mainly composed of two particular areas. One is British India, the other one is the princely states. When partition was happened, princely states was given three options. Either they can join with India, or they can join with Pakistan, or they can remain independent. Or they can remain independent. So the Jammu Kashmir ruler, Raja Hari Singh, Raja Hari Singh, Jammu Kashmir ruler, Raja Hari Singh, he, he was more favorable towards remain independent. But... Pakistan took this as an advantage and Pakistan tried to capture the Jammu Kashmir from the king. So Pakistan encouraged the local tribals. It had given the arms to the local tribals. So the local tribals obviously the local tribal revolt, tribal attack was happened on 20th October 1947. This is an attack by the local tribals and after this within one week 
27 October 1947 27th October 1947 the king raja hari singh he forwarded that instrument of accession he forwarded the instrument of accession what does it mean it means we will join with india but he requested certain safeguards certain protection to his kingdom people those protections okay so instrument of accession instrument of accession resulted into two things students resulted into two things number 1 okay jammu kashmir jammu kashmir integration jammu kashmir integration into india jammu kashmir integration into india this is the first thing we achieved and special provisions to jammu kashmir special provisions to jammu kashmir special provisions to jnk these special provisions in the form of what in the form of the article 370 in the form of article 370 this article 370 was implemented by issuing the presidential orders by issuing presidential orders we will discuss about that presidential orders okay very soon in which year they were released but this is the flow according to article 370 jammu kashmir have certain safeguards they can have their own constitution and all these things so according to their own constitution they framed their own constitution in that constitution even they added article 35a so always remember in this video we will discuss very frequently about article 35a that article 35a is not in the indian constitution we are referring the article 35a as a jammu kashmir constitution jammu kashmir constitution jammu kashmir can have the separate constitution according to what according to article 370 this is how article 370 came into existence this is the first one okay now so we know that how it came into existence then significance what is the significance the significance is article 370 given lot of autonomy to jammu kashmir in terms of what jammu kashmir can have its own constitution can have its own citizenship and can have its own laws parliament laws will not applicable in the jammu kashmir especially the 73rd 74th amendment panchayat raj as well as municipalities not implemented in the jammu kashmir and so many other laws even the ews reservation also not implemented in the jammu kashmir where jammu kashmir was having the article 370 except in terms of defense okay in terms of external affairs and in terms of communication except these three jammu kashmir was having all the autonomy under article 370 so now you can understand the significance of article 370 now why it was abolished the reason okay why it was abolished it was abolished that lawmakers of india the government thought that having article 370 is completely discriminatory okay you cannot treat a state special okay compared to other states when article 370 was there because of that article 35 was there in 35a was there in the jammu kashmir constitution that given discrimination against the women like if jammu kashmir women married to any person outside of jammu kashmir those women lose all their property rights even those women children also will lose the property rights this kind of discrimination was there even the local governments also not applied in the jammu kashmir to remove all this discrimination even outsiders cannot buy property in the jammu kashmir because of that private investments in the jammu kashmir decreased because of all these disadvantages government of india decided to abolish article 370 that is the reason behind why it abolished now you got an answer regarding how it got into the constitution the significance of article 370 and why it is abolished now we have to know the procedure this is very very important the procedure they followed what kind of procedure they followed procedure okay the procedure they followed students for that you have to understand you have to know article 370 article 370 the heading of the article 370 it reads like temporary provisions to jnk okay article 370 reads like this temporary provisions temporary provisions to jnk okay temporary provisions to jnk so yesterday in yesterday video i told you that i'll forward these notes either the weekly basis or the 15 days basis or monthly basis but this explanation you have to either the screenshot take the screenshot or else you can make the running notes article 370 temporary provisions to jnk in this specially article 370 clause 3 article 370 clause 3 clearly saying that president can abolish president can abolish president can abolish article 370 article 370 on the recommendation of on the 
recommendation of on the recommendation of constant assembly on the recommendation of constant assembly very very important so you have to be this clear on the recommendation of constant assembly of which on the recommendation of constant assembly of jammu kashmir don't get confused at constant assembly of india okay constant assembly of jammu kashmir based on their recommendation article 370 can be abolished but the question is now there is no constant assembly now there is no such kind of constant assembly in jammu kashmir so there is no constant assembly that means there is no one to suggest when no one is able to suggest how come you abolish the article 370 this is the question now we have to understand that students to overcome this legal issues government issued government issued two presidential orders presidential orders okay so the order number we are not going into the technicalities in notes i will tell you that order just for a simple understanding presidential order 1 and presidential order 2 presidential order 1 and presidential order 2 okay so listen carefully the presidential order 1 what it has done the presidential order 1 it replaced the word constant assembly with state assembly very very important this presidential order 1 it replaced what it replaced the constant assembly it replaced the word with it replaced the word constant assembly with what with state assembly that means now state assembly can recommend for the abolition of article 370 but you will get doubts when article 370 was abolished at that time state assembly was not there then who suggested because the state assembly was not there you know because the president rule was there in the jammu kashmir the assembly was dissolved when assembly was not there obviously who will give this recommendations governor will give the recommendation so first initially they changed the word constant assembly with state assembly then they make sure that state assembly was not there then obviously governor who is appointed by the central government they given the recommendation that the abolition of article 370 and they done the abolition of article 370 through presidential order second abolition of article 370 article 370 was abolished through presidential order second so the article 370 involves article 370 abolition involves listen carefully article 370 abolition article 370 abolition involves involves number 1 okay so presidential order presidential order presidential order okay that is about that is about abolition of article 370 abolition of article 370 and this process also involved the second one this is also the presidential order presidential order what is this presidential order is about application of central laws application of central laws application of central laws to jammu kashmir before that they were not applied because of the article 370 and third one third one they introduced one bill that is the jnk reorganization the jnk reorganization jnk reorganized into jnk ut i mean jammu ut as well as ladakh ut this bill and finally they they introduced one more bill that is about the extension of ews extension of ews to extension of ews to jnk so the abolition of jammu and kashmir involved these four things two presidential orders and two bills all these were introduced in the rajya sabha and lok sabha they were been passed this is the procedure so so far you must understand very clearly about this article 370 in terms of how it got into originally in the constitution significance why it got abolished the procedure followed for the abolition and the impact of abolition what is the impact of abolition obviously whatever they got through article 370 they been taken away okay in their process some are advantages to government of india and some challenges are also there we will discuss that in the ending of that video so this is the crux of this topic regarding the article 370 how got in how this article 370 got into this place i explained then procedure through which procedure it got removed in that process what kind of presidential orders and what kind of bills introduced also we checked now we will see the notes in detail so first why it is in news the constitution bench which led by the dv chandrachud they accepted that 
they are taking the petition which is challenging the abolition of article 370 this petition is challenging the abolition of article 370 here one question to you students constitutional bench means what is the minimum strength of judges constitutional bench means at least how many judges will be there tell me the answer at least how many judges will be there constitutional bench means very important question okay so the article 370 was abolished through presidential order which was released in 2019 5th of august i already mentioned article 370 was removed through presidential order okay this presidential order before this presidential order they issued another presidential order that replaced the word constituent assembly with state legislative assembly next this presidential order it ended the jammu kashmir special status and it bifurcated the jammu kashmir state into jammu kashmir ut as well as the ladakh ut and all the citizens now they can buy the property and they can settle in a jnk the, those are some of the consequences now in their process like i said earlier they introduced four one two presidential orders and two bills this entire process done by so done by which ministry students tell me this entire process done by which ministry that means which ministry abolished this article 370 which ministry dealt mainly the reorganization of jnk tell me these are the bills and article 370 article 370 given special powers regarding the jammu jnk article 370 clause 3 it is saying that president can abolish article 370 on the recommendation of constituent assembly and that word constituent assembly replaced with state assembly by presidential order 1 like i said earlier this full name is presidential order copy number 272 later they issued another presidential order according to that presidential order the special status was been removed even previously also some petitioners they went to supreme court but supreme court did not entertain those petitions but now supreme court accepted the petitions how the jammu kashmir how this article 370 got into that place because of the instrument of accession between the raja hari singh and union government except these three things foreign affairs defense and communication except these three things and the rest of the things jammu kashmir can have all its autonomy we discuss that okay next article 370 article 370 present in which part of the indian constitution okay it present in the part 21 that is temporary transitional and special provisions of the constitution it given special rights this article 370 started implementation through which presidential order the presidential order of 1954 1954 okay and why we are calling it is temporary because when the presidential order issued in article 19 i mean in 1954 year in the presidential order it is clearly saying that if jammu kashmir constituent assembly don't want this it will be abolished and if the plebiscite is conducted in the people among the people in that condition also they may remove the article 370 plebiscite is means taking people opinion regarding their sovereignty if you are taking people opinion regarding the public policy that is known as referendum that is the main difference between the referendum and plebiscite okay so features of article 370 already explained special provisions except three things defense foreign affairs and the communications this article 370 article 370 clause 1 clearly saying that article 370 clause 1 clearly saying that article 1 of indian constitution also applies to article 370 what is article 1 is talking about article 1 says that india that is bharat is a union of states that means even though we given special provisions to jammu kashmir still jammu kashmir it was part of india because article 1 applies to jammu kashmir you have to be very clear article 1 as well as article 370 so when president issued this presidential order in 1954 in 1954 president issued presidential order according to this presidential order jammu kashmir got a special constitution and in the jammu kashmir constitution they added one special article that is article 35a article 35a Article 35A, popularly known as Permanent Resident Law. What are the main provisions of Article 35A? I will explain now. But Article 35A is a result of an agreement between the is an agreement between the Jammu Kashmir, then Jammu Kashmir Prime Minister, the Sheikh Abdullah, as well as then Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. They had an agreement in 1952. That agreement popularly known as Delhi Agreement. According to that agreement, 
they added this article 35a in jammu kashmir constitution okay it was made happened in when 1954 presidential order president issued that order based on which article article 370 clause 1 sub clause d here we discussed about two articles mainly in 370 370 clause 1 as well as 370 clause 3 370 clause 1 talking about union of india applies to jammu kashmir article 371 it also says that president can issue the orders whereas article 370 clause 3 says that president can revoke the jnk the special status to jnk on the recommendation of constituent assembly we discussed that then these are the special provisions under article 35a what are the special provisions state can have their own laws and uh, citizenship also state can give permanent permanent citizenship to only the people who are living there they may not give citizenship to outsiders even they may not give citizenship to the people who take refugee from pakistan to jnk during the partition they also did not get the citizenship these kind of special rights were there the outsiders they cannot permanently settle they cannot buy any property they cannot get government job even they cannot get the scholarship even in case if jammu kashmir women if they if they marry any person from outside of jnk they lose all the property rights even their children also will lose all their property rights these are so discriminatory in nature that is the reason there are a lot of criticisms under article 35 what is the criticism the rest of the indians in jammu kashmir they were been treating as a second class citizens who ever not permanent even the refugees who came from pakistan they not given the permanent residentship okay the women are not having the rights and outsiders they were not treated this meritorious students they did not get the scholarship because of this discriminatory in nature so people arguing that this article 35a is fundamentally against various principles such as article 14 equality before law as well as article 21 protection of life so uh, some intellectuals they argued that this article 35a should be removed that is a grounds next what are the key changes fine now we are discussing about what are the implications when you are removing the article 370 what are the implications now all the central laws and state laws will apply to jnk and now jnk divided into two U uts jammu kashmir as well as the ladakh ladakh without assembly and jammu kashmir with assembly and previous to jammu kashmir assembly used to be 6 years now it is 5 years and now jammu kashmir fis will be controlled by lieutenant governor jammu kashmir so fis jammu kashmir government they can communicate with the union government through what through lieutenant governor that means cm has to report certain issues to issues to lieutenant governor and lieutenant governor to union government like rest of the uts and the law and order in the jnk straight away comes under jammu kashmir we discuss that next the rational why the article 370 removed because of its discriminatory nature in the beginning of the video i told you to encourage a private investment to encourage the infrastructure and to remove the discriminatory laws argument in favor of article 370 the people who are arguing in favor of removal of article 370 that it prevented article 370 prevented complete merger of jnk to india now after removing that article 370 you completely merged the jnk into india that is one of the arguments the discrimination and loss been taken away and article 370 was temporary in nature anyhow so it is time to remove and now we can implement the local governments in jnk and now jammu kashmir daughters they can have the good property rights now private people will go to jammu and kashmir they can buy lands and some people also arguing that this may curb this may limit the terrorism also so these are some of the views and finally one nation one constitution proposal actually it was strongly supported by sham prasad mukherjee sham prasad mukherjee he strongly opposed article 370 okay because of that even he was arrested by the police official in the police custody he lost his life sham prasad mukherjee and this sham prasad mukherjee basically and the differences the nehru and noon that okay this was agreement between the india and pakistan in 1950 sorry nehru and liaquat ali khan liaquat ali khan nehru and liaquat ali khan this agreement was made in 1950 sham prasad mukherjee opposed this agreement and even he resigned from the jawahar lal nehru cabinet why we are discussing the now about the sham prasad mukherjee 
he completely against this article 370 so these are some of the views in support of the article 370 abolition some arguments against article 370 people who are arguing against article 370 they are saying that it is constitutionally wrong because it must be done only by constant assembly not by the state government so they are saying it is wrong and it is against the people wish because you did not ask the people about the removal of article 370 these are the views who are opposing the article 370 abolition the criticism okay central government exercised its unitary powers then what are the challenges the challenges is number one legal challenges how to be overcome whether president can exercise those powers under article 370 or not that have to be this convince the coach the final conclusion is with the help of instrument of accession we not only integrated the jnk but we given some kind of sense of confidence to the people now even though the article 370 is not there the government has to continue that kind of confidence in the people in the future times that improves the unity and integrity of the nation so that is the conclusion and before we are ending the this uh, video the questions siachen glacier is situated to to the north of nubra valley this is about yesterday's question answer now today's question we'll see students today's question is about today's question is which statement is not correct about jnk not correct about jnk jnk has its own constitution and not correct in the context of now not in the context of article 317 no decision regarding the disposition of state of jnk can be made by government of india without the consent of state government so government must take the union government must take the help of the state government to remove the abolition of article 370 c residuary powers with respect to jnk rest with the state government but not the union government and d all the above are incorrect which one are the so incorrect statements which one are the incorrect statement jammu kashmir having its own constitution is a character incorrect you have to tell me in the present context not in the context of article 370 main question discuss the impact of abrogation of article 370 in india what is the impact do you think that it will help india to resolve kashmir disputes okay this is the main question anyhow we are ending this we came to the end of the video so before ending the video so just we will revise we discussed about article 370 the petition abolition of article 370 challenging that abolition the petition is being considered by the supreme court in this context we discussed about how it came into existence significance of article 370 why it got abolished and the procedure what we followed and finally the impact of abolition on common man i explained how it got into existence and then procedure we followed in detail so this is about the abolition of article 370 and it's challenging it's pit the challenging petition in the supreme court and supreme court accepting that petition so this is the detailed analysis with respect to article 370